Welcome to As He Is, So Are We. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this is uh, uh, 2 of 22 of 22, and we're glad you're on. Good to see all of our panel, plus Apostle Jermaine Thomas is with us tonight, and uh, so we're glad he, he dropped in. Yeah, uh, good to see uh, in our chat room, good to see Jadora Anderson. Uh, she's connected to one of these people uh, on the panel. Um, good to see you tonight, and good to see Dr. Faye. Uh, she loves this music, um, and, and uh, <laughs> uh, good to see, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, everybody, <laughs> good to see everybody. Uh, good to see uh, Linda Routley, one of our uh, uh, students from uh, Canada joining us tonight, and I'll tell you what, uh, these are exciting times. Now, we're in crunch time, so it's been a real day. I won't even describe to you the day, but I will tell you this, that so many good things have happened this week in that, uh, and also good to see Tarzi Martin from the Malaysia uh, area. Uh, and uh, so many good things are going on. We had a meeting this week with our website tech, and our website is just about ready to launch. When it does, so many things will be interactive. For example, our forms. Uh, we have uh, uh, ministerial ordination, uh, uh, consecration of apostles, confirmation of bishops, and we have an additional uh, form now for a fellowship member of World Bible School International Training Center online. And these forms, uh, plus back to our school, WBSU will be the, the student form. There'll be, I think, three or four different forms that students have to sign and fill out and so on. They will all be, click on the link, the form will pop up, fill out the form, Agree to the financial information, click send, boom, it's gone. Uh, save a whole lot of headaches and uh, so a lot of stuff. All of our, our, our year's worth of, 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 uh, of calendars on there for the school, uh, all of our classes, all of our uh, courses with the codes and the course descriptions. Oh my goodness, I can't even tell you everything that's on there. So much good stuff. So a lot of good things going on. And uh, so anyway, uh, thank you everybody for joining us tonight and thank you panel for being on. Uh, good to see Apostle Jermaine popping in. Uh, good to see Pastor Christopher, uh, Apostle Brett uh, with us, Dr. Cindy with us. And let me say this, if you didn't see Thursday night's show uh, with Dr. Cindy Coates, go back, go to YouTube, uh, to our YouTube, our ministry uh, channel, to uh, World Bible School Media and uh, watch that show. Uh, it will bless you in, in a, a great way. So uh, anyway, uh, we are talking about, um, and I've, I've already said welcome to everybody, so I've kind of, uh, kind of was just running real tight tonight, but uh, we're, we've been talking about, and this is our final session in understanding divine imagination. Now next week we're going to go to something brand new, um, and uh, while the, 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 I think the title really will bring it out, uh, I, I, this is going to be so, so in depth and so powerful about so many things. And, and, uh, this Thursday, Apostle Brian Christian is going to be on Kingdom Dynamics. And he actually, it, we're going to be talking about something that I didn't realize will kind of be a prelude to where we're going to go to next week, uh, on Tuesday, uh, as he is, so are we. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back in, uh, uh, uh Joshua chapter eight. And then Friday, uh, let's see who's joining me Friday. Uh, um, uh, I, I know it like I know the, the, as they say, the knob on the back of my head, and I don't know what that really means, but, <laughs> uh, let, let, just, just a minute, this is important, so I don't have to announce this at the end. So, uh, Friday on Friday Morning Conversations with me is, uh, 
Uh, oh, uh, it's been a long time. Apostle Emil Alston from South Africa. And uh, so we've got something really good to get into and, and talk about. And it'll be a blessing to everybody. Okay, so um, uh, no, uh, uh, Dr. Fay, it's not Paul Gray. We finished up all three weeks. And that's another series you can go back and watch. That was super, super powerful. So anyway, uh, what is divine imagination? And a, a question that was asked is, what makes divine imagination? And here's the response. when uh, It is when imagination is directed and influenced by our choices from within, the wisdom from the kingdom that was created within us. Now, last week we approached the scripture, opening scripture. We're not going to camp here, uh, but we're going to uh, at least bring this up. But from the Message Bible, Job 22, 28 says, You'll decide what you want and it will happen. Your life will be bathed Woo! in light. Now, Pastor Christopher says this. He says, all imagination is generated by what we consider. So I think it's very important what we consider uh, when we're talking about uh, the divineness that was created within us. And when we think and we focus on what is needed or desired in our lives, you know, a lot of times I've seen this happen so many times, we get a focus on, okay, here's where the real need is. Here's what I need to manifest. And we focus on that for a few days. And then if we don't see a manifestation, we bail on that. And, and we never see what could have come out of that. Well, the fact is, is that there was a man in the Bible by the name of Abraham. And we talked a little bit about that last week, but I want to move on to Romans chapter 4, verses 19 through 21. I'm going to read this real quick, get the panel on here, and see what happens. I don't know whether we're going to be able to go one round or two rounds each and see where this goes. But uh, it says, and being not weak in faith, he did not consider, here's that word consider, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was able, also able to perform. So uh, I want to just stop there and uh, we'll talk more about Abraham in a little bit. But uh, uh, let's bring our uh, uh, Dr. Cindy on tonight. Uh, ladies first, got so many guys to choose from, but Dr. Cindy. What do you think about Abraham? What about him not even considering a natural situation and allowing that to supersede, uh, uh, be superseded by the supernatural? I mean, I'm not a man, but I would think if I was a little up there in age, in the natural, um, I might kind of uh, question things along these lines <laughs> it might be time to back off in other words yeah and the natural <laughs> think about it i mean you might think well maybe i'm you know um sowed enough seed you know i mean i don't know but um now a, a lady there a woman um i can speak on behalf of maybe sarah you know there's a time where the womb is closed and that's natural and that's all talked about throughout society. You know, there's a change. I'm going through the change and all that. And so, um, you know, from a biological stand, uh, you know, there's this natural, uh, in, you know, inclination that there's seasons for everything. But you know what? When God says something, the whole seasons idea and the whole this season's over and that season... You can forget seasons because when God decrees and declares a thing, then it's not about a season is over and, oh, I've already missed the train. And if I should have, you know, I should have, would have, could have. And because, you know, that the expiration date is on my miracle. No, 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 no. Because when God says something, you just have to roll with that and go with that no matter what. And Abraham is such a fabulous example of someone that, I mean, by all natural, uh, pragmatic logic, you just wouldn't believe, you know, that you're going to be a father when you're in your 90s and, uh, and, and older like that. You think, well, my season's over. I'm a grand. I should be a grandpa by now. But no. 
I mean, think about that. I'm encouraged by Abraham and, and Sarah too, because mm -hmm. well, they thought that, you know, she was beautiful. I mean, God had renewed her youth and, and clearly they were tapped, you know, the, both of them tapped into something that, um, you know, the father of our faith, you know, the faith of Abraham, we are, we hear about that. We hear about, you know, having the faith of the, the fathers, you know, the, the, the patriarchs like that. They believe um, beyond the natural. And I just, I, I don't know, that's what just kind of came up in my spirit just then, because we all say, well, you know, that season is over. No, if God said something, none of that is pertinent. It's all irrelevant. If God says something's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's just going to happen no matter what in the natural seems to hinder it. It will happen. And I am, again, I'm very inspired uh, with Abraham's faith. Yeah, you know, you think about it. Abraham didn't allow anything that was uh, that to influence him in the natural realm as far as what he could see here and touch. But he was only influenced and or inspired by what God had said. And I think that's such a, a, a important aspect of this story. Uh, Apostle Jermaine, so glad to see you after a bit, buddy. I know you've been working and things have been uh, tight, but uh, we're glad to have you. H how about this uh, thing with Abraham? I mean, what a what we say, a bulldog of faith. What what about the guy? I like, I think the scripture reference, I believe in Hebrews, that these were uh, people who are of like passion as we are. You know, um, as Cindy stated, you know, speaking from uh, just a natural perspective, right? And desire, uh, human desire, we all can identify with that. Um, age or aging um, is, uh, for some people, is a, a reminder, you know, of their mortality, right? Uh, but for others, it, it could be an experience you know, to, of life and, and I say life on top of life, right? <laughs> you know, because you got a greater sense of wisdom. Uh, some of the things you 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 pour energy into in your, your youth, you you're more settled, right? <laughs> in some sense. Some do. <laughs> for some people, uh 50 is the new 40 and for others. But anyway, uh uh it uh one of the things about this uh this this story here, the imagery you know, cast it here, you know, is this reality of, 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 of faith, right? That I think in essence is our own responsibility. Mm. Um, you, I, we've, we've downplayed for a long time the, the essence and the nature of our own person or, or, or nature of spirit, right? Because we're spirit slowed down to visibility. And so um, maybe in there an awareness for Abraham, this, 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 this realization, right? This settling of a reality uh, for him in his life and, and, and seeing that from this lens of faith uh, or assurance, right? Um, of, of, of this assurance of life and being able to, to, to see that, you know, I, I think there's in there, you know, uh, God asks Abraham, you know, what do you see? You know, look out, what do you see? Yeah. You know, he could have, he could have saw something entirely different, you know, and, and, or looked at the stars and, and, and this, this vastness, right, of God, this, this vastness of life that there was no, I, there was no, the, the boundaries, there was, there's no boundaries, right? The boundaries only persist in our perception. And so this was incumbent upon him and his reality and what he wanted to project out. And so when he saw the stars and, and that reality of, you know, it couldn't be numbered, right? You know, and looking out. And so I, I think that there is, because that's often lost, right? Because sometimes faith is uh, often discussed in a sense of something that's you know, God's responsibility, right? Or, you know, I'm waiting in faith for God or something. But no, I, I think that this sets, you know, stage that no faith in some aspects is our responsibility. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know, one of the things I've loved for years about It Is Finished 
is the fact that it is finished. <laughs> I mean, it's like when he rested, he rested. Now you get up and you do something. Don't do it in at labor some toil, but do it in faith. Uh, Apostle Brett, you're a dreamer. Uh, you know about vision. You know about when you get something, as, especially in the business world and, and in the ministry world. I don't want to cut that short, uh, 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 but but you know what it means to to imagine it and to get that image and then to go for it. And so uh, a, a point that was just made about Abraham looked out and God says, what do you see? He could have said, you know what? I see nothing but failure in my future. I just don't see it. I'm ever going to make it. What do you see in this? What What is this that's so empowering for other people watching us today? Go ahead. Hello again. Uh, thanks for having me back, Dr. Bill. And I'm glad everybody's on here and everybody's adding to a little bit of uh, uh, of this. Um, and Apostle Jermaine started going into the, you know, Dr. Cindy said something about the physical and Apostle Jermaine said something about the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And the imagery of what maybe the the Hebrews were talking about when we we're when we're we're talking about uh, say say 100 what it, what does that mean you know in the imagery of 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 what they're talking about 100 is like infinity we think 30 60 full 90 full 30 times 60 90 if you take three and you take six and you take nine oh it stands for the Utah Bave which is Jesus Christ. The same glory that was given to Jesus is in you too. And where's the Holy of Holies? Where's the temple of God? It's between the two cherubs. It's between the two cherubs. And in scripture, this is what the Hebrews were talking about. They were talking about physical intimacy and they were talking about two covenants and they were talking about a spiritual, which the infinity of Abraham look within and within what you get, you can have any anything that you desire. And so that's kind of what some of these um um, teachers where I've been led to are, are talking about where the kingdom of God, you and the father are one, the same glory of Jesus has been given to us. There are such yeah. the foundational teachings of our union with God, but it seem like they're rarely taught, you know? And so we have the ability to think on anything and what we desire with no thought on how it will actually happen. And I'm, 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 I'm looking at some notes here. I'm like where your money will come from. So I'm wanting to be an mm. inheritance like Abraham, you know, I'm done with the, the evil, the toilsome labor, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking to be a, a, what you say, child of God, but how about a son of God? How about, yeah. uh, you know, a, a, a brother of Jesus or, or as Jesus is, so am I in this world, you know, did he have all things? Could he create all things from, from within? Where does, where does God, you know, father, if you look up father, you look up Lord, we, we talk about it's the same thing and it's union. And uh, we have, I love the part about subconscious and, and conscious mind, where the subconscious part of the mind, where I wrote some of this down, where some of these guys, um, they, they knew it. And I can, I can take, talk about some of them, but Bob Proctor was one guy that said the most valuable thing he ever learned was the difference between the, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And this is really called the kingdom of God. You and the father are one. And so where is the harlot? There's a scripture that says it's better to dwell in Rahab. <laughs> Rahab's, Rahab was a harlot. What was she? The, the, the conscious mind is the ability to, to focus in on something, to plant the seed, which would be the parable of the sower, which that comes from like, you know, that is the most basic of the basics. If we can't get the parable of the sower, you know, in the physical, the, the rod, if the branch of the man goes into the, the gate of the woman of the womb and plants the seed and then die, and it goes down and it rests. And it's just like what we would do. We would the labor to rest. We would, we would go in and use our conscious mind to plant the seed in the female, the, the feminine side of the subconscious mind, and it will take any seed. Will a harlot take any seed? Now we say, boy, that's the first time you'll ever see the light of day on the harlot. That's that's why when you go in and, and, and read, uh, uh, you do the, the the story of the woman caught in adultery. It doesn't have anything. The, the imagery is all about what we're talking about, Abraham. There's imagery there. And we get so caught up on the letter or the physical aspect of 
of of the Bible and a lot. I'm telling you, it, it's hard to make sense of it because what happens is, is we start to not see it in our, we don't see it in our realm right now. And we're looking back and go, well, why do they have all these things? Well, they were talking about imagery and does the, does the, the, the Jacob, you know, surplants Esau, it's the smooth man in the stone. And then, and then he, he surplanted Esau, which became Israel. You know, so all of these stories are the are the same, basically. I mean, you can go out through the whole Bible, and this is what I've been learning, and it's just so beautiful. Where when you, you know, we have the ability to think on anything we desire with no thought on how it will happen or where the money will come from and bring it from the finished work of God. All things are possible into the physical reality. We can create the pictures and speak anything we desire. And uh, so we, and then creation responds to the pictures we create in our mind and what we speak within. Now, does this have, I think it has to do with a lot of, are you here? Are you, it's your heart. And so do you desire, are you, um, it says we've been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. Um, all things are possible. Um, are you worthy of that? You know, why not? Can we start there? Maybe I can say, just because I exist on this planet, you know what, I'm, I'm worthy of anything I want. And so I mean, we need to come from a place of love. And I think that's where it starts, you know, faith worketh by love. And so I want to, I want to stop there. And then I'll, I'll continue on about talking about the minute we imagine something, we get into our emotions involved. Um, the subconscious mind or the spirit within man, which is feminine in scripture is submissive on the conscious to the conscious mind. It literally starts to happen and bring it into our physical world. So we don't really know how, but that I think is the glory of God that's within us, that dwells within, in the physical body, you know, so we have the body, we have the, the conscious and the subconscious, and we get so messed up when we talked about the tree of knowledge of good and evil and everybody, all the grace guys, and even including myself would say, oh, we got to eat from the tree of life and we can't eat from the tree of good and evil. Well, what did she say when she ate from that tree? She said, we now found out I was, I could create like God. <laughs> I was, I became, an, I was Elohim in the beginning, Elohim created Elohims. And so is, if we get all confused, I think, you know, and I'm just learning a lot of this because I've been, I've been continuing my path in the Hebrew statements. And I'm going, if we have ego, why, you know, that's another religion. We got to kill the ego, just like the spirit has to kill the flesh. You know, isn't everything that my, God made good? Everything that was created has to be good in its sense. And that's what I want a gospel to bring into my life. So I can actually bring the good news to my, to my five-year-old or anybody that to make it understand. And so I'm going to go on from there because this starts opening up different frequencies and things within our heart with a, like a magnetism that we have that comes out of us. And that goes into quantum realm and magnetism throughout that we see that they're they're starting to see that it brings photons and and just how how amazing you know the creation or how creation or how things come into physical matter how matter responds to thought. Oh, okay, so so here here's the thing, uh, God gave us the physical example, um, and, and yes, procreation is a part of that, but. Uh, you know the joining of a, of a of a man and a woman, a husband and wife, and 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 children are, are birthed forth from that relationship. Here's here's the thing. It's also an example of a supernatural joining, and and you mentioned that. And, and so this supernatural joining lets me know that look, there is union between me and my Creator. Uh, Elohim created Elohims. That was so beautifully put. Uh, the, the one created the many, but yet the many are one. <laughs> That's almost mind boggling. Uh, but the fact is, is that Father wanted to show us that we're not only of him, but we're, uh, we're with him or in him. And, and so um, the, the truth is, is that uh, I am so glad that my divine, think about Abraham, for example, his divine imagination to see an event that never happened in the earthly realm before. 
such an amazing thing. Uh, so, so I wrote this down. Imagination is literally influenced by what we refuse to consider. Uh, this might have come from Pastor Christopher. Uh, as to whether it has been done before, thought of before, or whether it makes any natural sense at all. So, you know, when we talk about something that doesn't make sense, but yet we have this, this yearning from the inside that, you know, this is the thing I really believe. And, you know, the Apostle Paul, well, here's what he had to say about Abraham uh, in that we just read from this passage. So, so Pastor Christopher, uh, what are we seeing here? What about Abraham? This is such a powerful example. You know, I think um, the, the King James talks about Abraham considered not um, his own body, neither considered he the deadness of Sarah's womb. He considered not the um, miracle translate, the miracle, the miracle, the mirror translation. <laughs> the mirror study Bible says that um, Abraham's faith would have been nullified if he were to take his own age and the deadness of Sarah's womb into account or consider is what King James says, if you'd have taken these things into, into account. And so um, when it comes down to uh, Abraham uh, and, and his divine imagination, I think it's, it's important what you, just, it's, it's just as important what you consider not as what you consider. Now, the root of, the root of confidence for the child of God, the root of confidence for a son of God is the integrity of God's word. Amen. Do I believe that God is integral? And if I believe that God has integrity, that will be the basis and the root for all confidence in within my life. The root of the the root of confidence for the child of God is the integrity of God's word. Yeah. And Abraham um, let nothing else he considered nothing else but the integrity of God's word. He did not consider. Um, he did not consider his body, which, and I think we discussed this slightly last week, he did not consider his body, which was the in, internal factor. He did not consider Sarah's womb, was the, which was the external factor, okay? I like, I like what Apostle, I like into what Apostle Brett said. Um, if, 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 I need, if I need the money, I cannot consider my credit or anything from the past, nor can I consider um, the loan company or whatever other means, I only can rest in, in and take action based on the integrity of God's word. That is the root of our confidence. That is where we um, uh, spring forth when it comes down to the our our, our confidence. It is this. It is in. It is his integrity. So so Abraham, I liken it to what Dr. K. Fairchild says. Uh, you know, he created a vacuum. If he created a vacuum where he did not allow lower thoughts contrary uh, to the integrity of God's word come into play. Every time they came, um, uh, he, 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 would, he would eliminate them. And I'm so grateful for the scriptures giving us that psychological, if you will, uh, insight. April, it, it gave us insight into uh, Abraham's thought practices. He didn't consider this. He didn't consider that. But one of the things, Dr. Bill, I hope I'm not getting ahead of ourselves, mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is, is verse number 20. And I'm going to read this from the, mir the Mirror Study Bible. I was about to say miracle again. But uh, the Mirror Study Bible, it says, while he had every reason to doubt the promise, he did not hesitate for a moment, but instead, empowered by faith, confident, faith confidence, he continued to communicate. I love this communicates God's opinion, God's opinion, not the opinion of, of society, not the opinion of the TV commercials, not the opinion of uh, uh, what other people have said, not the opinion of history, not, this, not the opinion of social norms, not the opinion of doctor's reports, not the opinion of how he felt, because it's, it's because it's just as important in, important as you deal with the internal factors too, because symptoms or deadness <laughs> of your body has a, a loud language. If you let it, okay. He didn't consider any of this, but he continued to communicate God's opinion. And the rest of this verse uh, in the commentary goes on and says, 
Every time he introduced himself or someone called him by his name, it was a bold declaration and repetition of God's promise, calling things that were not as though they were. I would imagine, the commentator says, uh, that Sarah spoke his name the most. In fact, every time they addressed one another, they spoke the promise, mother of nations, yeah. kings of people shall come from you, yeah. Abraham, Good. the father Good. of a multitude. So every time they called each other, recognizing that Sarah called him this probably the most um they were they were uh raising their consciousness of god's integrity raising their consciousness and awareness of the of the opinion of god more than uh more than all of these other circumstances that would minimize his opinion i'm telling you, the the root of, of of biblical the root of uh confidence when it comes down to the child of god is the integrity of God's word. And, and when I rest in that, I, it, it will obliterate. It's not even a matter of warfare. It's a matter of resting in this, the integrity of his word and uh, uh, all in obliterating and creating a vacuum um, of all lower thoughts, all lower thoughts. And when you, when you, I like the way, uh, I can't remember who said the quote, but um, he said, Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle, he said, once you, once you can, once you detach and, and you can recognize your thoughts, you're already at a higher level of consciousness. You're already at a higher level of awareness. And, and you can make a conscious decision to choose God's opinion over anything in the physical and anything else that was that's contrary. And so biblical, I mean, a Christian count. Uh, Christian or sonship confidence is rooted in the integrity of his word. And, and you, you make a practice of eradicating, evicting any other thought contrary to that. And that's what Abraham did. He did not consider this. He did not consider that. But he did consider this. And he did consider that. And that is the basis of what I believe to be divine imagination. I'm going to choose to rest and practice this image as opposed to another. Dr. Bill? Amen. 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 Yeah, we're, we're going to take up an offering here in a minute. That was good. Amen. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so Dr. Cindy, you know, here's the bottom line. Uh, Abraham, uh, this was based on uh, his imagination being directed by his choices. So for me to make a decision, a deliberate choice about something, I first got to tap into my my a divine imagination and entertain that ponder that think about that and then let a decision that i make okay this is what i'm going for my father calls me blessed my father calls me whole my father calls me of a sound mind my father father call, and you can go through the list and you say okay so this is in this category and this is what i'm going to go for so i've made a decision uh, would you care to elaborate on that? Well, yeah. Um, this thing is not emotional. Um, I, I want to say that th this is um, something that whenever you come into alignment with your mind, will, and emotions, when your soul aligns with the, the spirit of God and you become aware of that and you acknowledge that, um you know facts and data and emotion and all that is completely irrelevant it does not apply because what you've done is you have laid hold to the truth of god and that truth is applied and it's a um you make a quality decision and in your mind it becomes an absolute and it's an irrefutable, it's uh, non-negotiable. It becomes something that's absolutely concrete and solid in your, in, in your mind and your, um, your will. I think it has to do with the will because your will is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, if you let your emotions um, and then incorrect information, facts come in and sabotage your will, um, that sometimes keeps you from making that quality decision. But whenever you align your will with the truth and the word of God, what God has said, then you have resolve. 
you have such resolve you have you're so anchored and there's no um you know jesus said you know what are what did you think you're going to see a a reed out here blowing in the wind you know i mean what did you think i was did you not did you think i was some uh, um something that's not stable and solid and and um and golly y'all I, I i just gotta obey god right now i'm sorry I'm, <laughs> oh this might not even this, this might sound like it's not on uh topic dr bill so i i'm aware of that it's not like i'm trying to change the subject but i really am um I, i'm quickened to share with you guys something it's personal it's very personal but i think it's going to help somebody besides myself um Okay, so I got a prophetic word yesterday from a powerful woman of God. She's got so much wisdom. She's an apostle here in Atlanta, um, very, very seasoned, um, very, um, she was a professor at a Bible college here too. And so um, I was on the phone with her yesterday morning and she just started to prophesy over me personally. And I'm sharing this because I think it's going to help somebody else. She said to me, she said, you are not an acorn, you are an oak. She said the acorn has the DNA and the potential to become an oak, uh, but when it's put in the right environment, it takes root and it becomes the oak. Well, she's telling me this on the phone. My husband's upstairs taking a shower and the Lord tells my husband in the shower, Cindy is not a corn, she is an acorn. So he comes downstairs and he's, you know, getting ready and eating his breakfast. And I told him, I said, I had a really amazing prophetic word from um, Carolyn, our friend. And uh, I told him that she said I was a, I wasn't an acorn. I was an oak. And he burst into tears. He started crying because he just was so amazed at how the spirit of God had just done that. You know, boom, like within the same window of time in our home under the same roof. And I said, the Lord is speaking a word. And I said, what did it mean to you? Not a corn. He goes, because a corn just grows one time in one season, it's cut down and it's over. And you got to go back in and plant that corn again and, and plow up that field again. And it's all that and all that. He said, but an oak tree is for hundreds and hundreds of years. It grows and grows and grows and grows and produces and it creates shade and it creates a, a, a place for a, a birds and squirrels and whatever to go up there and sit in the tree. And, and it becomes, you know, it's just solid and it's, it's uh, perpetual and ongoing. And I think that's what it has to do with being um, an acorn rooted and, and having um, that divine imagination, which has, a, you know, which has discipline that has a resolve connected to it, that it's not emotional and it's non-negotiable. And it's all about we're making this choice to obey what God says and to believe what God says. And there's people that say this, they go, oh, I will see it and then I'll believe it. Well, that's right. not the way in the word we have to believe it first, then we see it. If we don't believe it first, we'll never see it. And, and that takes faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, the Apostle Paul said that he lived by the faith of the Son of God. The Greek there says that he lived by the faith of a Son of God. And that's our position. We are sons and daughters of God. Sonship is in us. We can choose to manifest our sonship. So, Apostle Germain, when we come to this about Abraham, he considered not his own body. A hundred years old now, and he did not even even flicker a thought, just not even bat an eye toward the fact that uh, Sarah's womb was now beyond uh, that place of producing a child. The Hebrew here says for the word considered, legizomai, meaning to conclude. He concluded a thing. Uh, even when it was about Isaac, as we looked at last week, uh, he saw Isaac in his imagination resurrected from done. Uh, we talked about that. But the fact is, is to look at something and say, I'm not even going to pay attention to it. I'm not even going to go. You know, you know, Dr. Jerry Savelle years ago said that we need to learn to uh, uh, glance at the storm, but gaze at God. So we notice our surroundings. 
but our focus is not going to be disrupted by our surroundings. Apostle Jermaine, uh, jump in on that. Yeah, listen, um, this is this is really this is really a phenomenal flow and conversation. I'm getting started here. <laughs> um, yeah. So again, this I, I think um, Apostle Brett was alluding to it. This the reality um, of Abraham, right, is us. It's the reality in us. This is a, a, a you would say that Abraham could represent, you know, something foundational, something solid, right, within our own awareness of understanding. It's not something that you have to seek. It's a reality within. And I think um, the, the, the trajectory of the conversation is, is, is suggesting to us um, that this, the, the auspice, again, the auspice and responsibility for the reality that, that's created in our lives, you know, is of our own making. It is of our own choosing. And I think that that's uh, one of, uh, that's a foundational reality because a lot of times we are, uh, we've been conditioned to be victims of circumstances, victims of, of situations rather than uh, those who are arbiters of our situation, arbiters of our circumstances in our awareness of understanding. And so Abraham represents an, an, uh, uh, a change in our awareness, right? A reality that this, 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 um, uh, th there's a reality of oneness that you see. I, I accepted this reality that's being presented to me by God, right? This is God's word. So it's not just, it's not just a word, right? It's, it's a reality that he accepted, <laughs> okay? It's, it, you know, it's, it's a reality that he accepted. That, so that's, a, that's about a reality that's in us. I had this encounter um, a couple of years ago, and I spoke about this a few times before, but I had this encounter, and what I heard in this encounter was, what is reality? And so uh, when I heard that question, I, when God gave me those type of things, that always means to go do my homework, right? <laughs> uh -huh. um, and I'm finding even now today, this has, been, this has been a journey about reality, right? About what is reality. And I'm realizing now today in, in growing in this awareness of understanding that reality is of my own making. Uh, Dr. Carolyn Lee said that 80%, 80 80% of the disease that starts in the body starts in the mind. Yeah. And so my question was, how do we get this 80% to work? <laughs> you know what I mean? For our benefit um, and uh, for the life that I desire and, and want to live in my life. And uh, one of the things that Sandy was talking about, the tree, um, what, part of one of, my uh, one of my meditation practices is, is that, uh, out of Psalms 1, I, 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 my imagination. So what I do is I get still and I ground myself and I see myself as a tree, right? Because a tree represents stability. It, it, you know, it rather, uh, rather the seasons change, right? The, 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 the tree is rooted and it goes with the seasons. That's why I think Cindy alluded to it earlier about, it's not about these seasons of change. It's about this groundedness. What are you grounded in? Whew. And so, you know, what are you grounded in? And, and that is of your choice and your own making. I think uh, a brother spoke to it. He said, you could be grounded in your opinions. <laughs> you know, Pastor Chris said, you could be grounded in your opinions. You could be grounded in your social conditioning. You could be grounded in your religious conditioning. Or you could be grounded in this reality of life in you, to be, be grounded in my I amness, to be grounded in this oneness, in my oneness with, with, with father and mother. I like to use, I'm using mother and father because I have to recondition my mind, right? Because I, <clears throat> I personified God in my own understanding just in one dimension of father when God is encompassing of both you know, uh, the spirit and nature of both encompassing masculine and feminine. And so I'm trying to train myself to say mother, right, to, to again, ground myself in this reality of understanding of God, not just in a male persona, but also in a female persona. And the scripture talks about um, El Shaddai, the nourisher and things like that. And so uh, when, when uh, this, this for us in Abraham and our imagination is about this grounding, what are you grounded in?
Um, a lot of people are grounded in the Bible, right? They're, they're more Biblicans uh, than they are Christ-centric. Um, and again, we, we've downplayed, um, and it's not, I don't think it's intentional, because we've, we've taught us how to live out of a natural realm reality. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about, what we're talking about today, we're talking about how to live from a different realm of reality. And uh, that's that's different. How to live from the inside out? I don't know how to do that. You know, I know how to live from the outside in. I know how to live out of the opinions and, and and my social conditioning. And so there's a shift that has to take place in our awareness of understanding. And I think that the the other part to this conversation, and I'll end it here, is is that again, the reality that you live in your life, you can be the arbiter of that. That is a part of your responsibility, not God's, not Jesus's, it's ours. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, everybody watching, listen, we're not trying to take anything away from our creator, not in the least, uh, but it's just the fact that everything that he did in creation, he created within you so that you could take the ball and run with it. And we're always looking back to God and blaming God when it doesn't work. And and then we're praising God when it does work. And and, and but, I, I, you know, just look, I mean, faith is a part of this. You know, when we read when we read earlier from Romans four, uh, the mirror study Bible says Abraham's faith would have been nullified if he were to take his own age and the deadness of Sarah's womb into account. So, and, and also, listen, you can call dead things to life, okay? Uh, you can call dead things to life. I mean, you know, again, we're talking about Abraham's divine imagination. Well, let's just bring it fo fast forward to the 21st century. We're talking about our divine imagination that's directed by our choices to live by what we see, hear, and touch as opposed to uh, what uh, could be imagined. Uh, I, I can either live by the natural senses of the natural realm and say, this is my limitation. Uh, I believe that the natural realm is really just a picture of what I'm reflecting out of my own supernaturalness as I'm growing and developing. And so who do you see yourself as, as a supernatural creature? Um, and, and I think we have to be like Abraham, be deliberate in what we entertain. And then uh, uh, we've got to uh, take our own imagination and direct it or point it uh, towards something. Uh, Apostle Brett, uh, I want to get back to you, and then uh, Pastor Christopher will close us out. But uh, what do you, what do you, what's on your mind? What do you, what do you see, buddy? Oh boy, I just had this last night. The shift, the shift is happening. Two, 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 two. It's happening. The shift. You know, you say I'm going to preach it. You know, isn't it wonderful that this all comes to me so easily? Is unveiled from within. Mm -hmm. Every story and every allegory and every imagery is in the Bible. Is mine. It is actually me. It is about me. Is it about, it's about the creation of God. It's about everything. It's in the beginning was the word. And I want to say the Hebrew word there is called the bar, the let bet resh. And it actually means in, in whole, the let means the gateway. So we're going to look at the physical size of the gateway. There's a rod, a rod of Aaron, which is within the man. And there's a rod within that goes within, plants a seed. You can't understand anything, remember, if you don't understand the parable of the sower. And thank God for seed time and harvest, because in the world there'll be seed time and harvest. And so we can see the creative ability of God. In the beginning was the creative ability of God. And when God in Elohim, and Elohim was Elohim. So we were we were in the beginning. The word is not something I, I have to take God as morality for, you can. And I always like to go back to the placebo. So that, that saves our, it saves a lot of us, I think, you know, because anything that we agree upon uh, within our heart, it actually is going to be okay. Even if you agree upon, you don't believe something like you say, I said the other day on the, thank God, you know, and I think manifestation is, like I said, the shift is happening. We're going to start we're going to start manifesting things faster and faster without even any words. We're going to be able to, you know, just see it within, imagine within. In the beginning was the word, and the, the, the ability with God was with God, you know, was with us. So, and, and so it was, 
the Dillette was the doorway or the gateway. And that's, that's where we're saying the dwelling place. Um, where does Angelos, let's just say that, a messenger, angel, where does that messenger have to be? It has to be within. Angelos is a messenger. And we're all like, you know, let's call in our, and I'm not saying maybe there is guides and we, you know, the, the great cloud of witnesses. I love it. But, you know, all the things that we're looking at here, and I just, I just love that whole part of, um, you know, the blood, we think it has to do, it, the blood was the wine of the grapes. It was in the cup of garden. It was actually overflowing. And it was, take this from me. I have the glory of God. Come on, guys. You guys know you can have it all. It wasn't agony with a, you know, the Dillette word was the two covenants. It was, it was the doorway and the rod of Aaron that was actually um, the, a, a creative ability to create. And so, man, I just... I see some of this stuff and I'm learning it and it, it's, it's hard for me when I get into the, the, the imagery of a me, that's who, that's who I am in every story, you know, David, um, man, that's a great story to go into and who was Goliath and the smooth stone and what was that all bet, you know, about laying down. I just, all I got to do, I don't have to fight anymore. I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to do anything. But it hit him in the third eye, you know. It's 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 opening up our our temple uh, to the glory of God that's within us, and that's where I'm. I I like to look at some of this, and it's just where I went, you guys. I'm not saying anybody's has to do that, but to go back to the where the Hebrews were really speaking about these, what these words were really meant, and it it frustrated frustrates me too that I would have to actually write some of this stuff down. But it sometimes it gets so simple as this, guys. If you were at in the beginning was you and you were the creative ability to create maybe i just take my pencil and i write down what i want and then i can say how my life is going to be and then i can say i have it i already have this thank oh i can just sit there and go so i would pray something like this i would go into the secret place many mansions all things are possible we know that and i would say isn't it wonderful if you had a relation, my relationships and my kids love me. Isn't it wonderful that oh, I, my, my family, I, I love my wife more than anything. Isn't it wonderful that I have $20,000 in my bank account, you know, stuff like that. And I know I'll get beat to, I mean, they're like, you can't do that. You got to go out and work. Now, if it, it is attracted to me or it's not attracted to me, I may have a passion and Hey, it won't be like work. I might walk out this door and get on a plane and get a passive income going on. But if I believe, so there was an instance saying having a job, not saying quit your job, going out and not getting a job or doing right. anything. Right. But what do those people believe that have a job and that's their source of income? They believe if they quit, they won't have any more income. So not all of them, some might say, well, now this opens up big possibilities. Now universe, show me not show me where this income can from from. I don't know how. And there's people that say, show me how to make more. Show me how to receive more. Show me how to receive more. And we can go with that. And I think there's just more levels and more levels of absolutely our creative ability. That is the ability to receive anything that we desire, good or bad. And so that's when we get to see, hey, that's our responsibility to be a great person or a great being in a civilization that we create within our own four walls, within ourselves that magnifies out. Yeah, and, that, and that's good. Uh, and that, that takes us back to uh, Proverbs once again. And I'm trying to get back there real quick. Um, uh, where he says, um, just give me, give me a second. Okay, we're tracking back. All right. In the Message Bible, you'll decide what you want and it will happen. Uh, your life will be bathed in light. So bathing your life in light. And, and thank you for the example, Apostle Brett, because, you know, you can, you can uh, declare these things with gratitude um, or you can declare them uh, as uh, here's what I'm believing for and someday way out there at some point. I hope this comes. I hope this happens. But you can just say, you know what? I, I'm so thankful. I am so thankful that uh, all of this, and, and you can name them one by one, as Apostle Brett suggested. Um, Pastor Christopher, um, I'm going to bring you on to close us out. 
um, you know, <laughs> this is so powerful. It's like, it's like, where do you go next? Well, put put the cap on this. Uh, you're the pinch hitter. Uh, b b bat it in, home run, buddy. Oh whoa! The, the, you know, I'll say this. I'm really um, appreciating what Apostle Jermaine stated about how how is our responsibility when it comes down to faith. Um, um, I think that the the most under in my in my in my journey in my walk with God um, in, in in dealing with religion, um, the most uh, underdeveloped and the, and the subject that was taught the least is our oneness with God right it's been taught the least has been it's, it's been emphasized the least and as a matter of fact when you read over there in John when Jesus started talking about how him and his father were one it you know you know the the, the story goes that you know people were saying people that followed him like this is a hard saying you know what I mean he talked about eating of his eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood and how him and the father were one and they were trying to stone him and he like what are you trying to stone me for and he like because you're, you're making yourself equal with god by by identifying himself him, by identifying his oneness and in, with that in mind um one of, when you eliminate the whole sense of separation from god like he's uh he's not the sky god that i'm trying to get come lord Oh, come down and rest among us, right? Yeah. Since yeah. he's not that, that what that does is that that eliminates um, me putting accountability on other things, whether it's a devil, whether it's our, whether it's God, but it, it causes us to be responsible. Mm -hmm. God and I are one. I am not God, but He is in me, um, and He and He manifests as me, right? Um, and um, with, with that being said, I I am responsible in my fault life. They talk about the good fight of faith. Uh, the good fight of faith is a focus fight, if you will. Now, it's, it's really a, it's really a matter of uh, practicing resting, right? I remember some time ago, Apostle Jermaine did a teaching about uh, going with the flow, right? Um, walk in the spirit and you won't even fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's not a fight. And so... When it comes down to divine imagination, uh, how I'm learning in this part of my journey in taking responsibility for my faith is not to uh, rest in memory, but to be intentional in imagination. Memory for me has been conditioned by the past. Uh, memory for me has been conditioned by trauma. Memory for me um, will, will have me focusing on the deadness of my body. Memory for me will have you focusing on the deadness of Sarah's womb. But but I can't. But I won't live by memory. I live by imagination. And so uh, so memory for me will focus on the abandonment of my childhood. But imagination takes me to eternality in Christ before I was in my mother's womb. So my history is greater than my my past. Come on, right? And so, so, but that takes imagination. And when it comes down to imagination, I have to be intentional. And that is what took Abraham over the top. He was intentional. Mm -hmm. They called them each other's names according to the promise. The Bible says by the promises of God, we become partakers of the divine nature. And so it has to be an intentional act of imagination. And that is why it's important to dwell in done. That is why it's important to dwell in done. I have to rest and use my imagination as a pillow to rest in what he already said. It is the, it's dwelling in done. I'm not, I have to rest in that. And so I'm, in, so when it comes down to using our divine imagination, it is agreeing with what the opinion of our God, opinion of our father from that place. And then, and then, and then, and then directing our imagination to that place, in that place, as that place from the, you know what I mean? All of those different factors. And so divine imagination is an extremely intentional act. Not, not, not resting in memory, but directing imagination, and it's intentional. It is intentional. So, so to all of those out there, you know, I love what Apostle Brett said because what it does is that it raises awareness. I am so happy and grateful. You know, if I was Abraham, I am so happy and grateful that I get to hold my. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna call him Isaac. 
<laughs> right? You know, now Isaac means laughter or joy, right? And, and what a joy to, to, to rest in this thing as, you know, uh, that promise was so, that promise was so integral that he had children after Sarah, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. he, he had children with Keturah. He had children with other, he had children because he rested in that thing. And so I want to encourage everyone you know, I, I was, I, I heard a quote, quote early this week, Dr. Bill, that said, um, I will not fall under my thoughts. Okay. In other words, I will not be directed by the feelings of my memory, memories. Okay. My memories do not dictate reality. My life is a projector of what I am aware of. And I am intentional about my awareness. And so when it comes down to divine imagination, I would not be dictated by memory. I would be, I would dictate and I would direct according to imagination. And uh, because all of my memory is based on what keep me grounded in this, in this seen world reality. But I am not conformed right. to this world. I, have, I do not look at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. As a matter of fact, the things that are seen have to be, are directed by me. I was, we were never created to be directed by the deadness of our womb. We were never created to be directed by the deadness of Sarah's womb. We were never created to live that way. We were created to be suspended in midair, if you will, and, uh, and, 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 and live in a realm of impossibility. But hey, listen, that takes, that takes practice. The word manifest simply means to unveil. And, and, and so I, uh, I have to, like Dr. Cindy said, hey, I love that word. I have to be established, rooted, and grounded. You know, the, the significant thing about uh, uh, a tree is that um, its roots go deep to find water. And, 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 and when it's pressure up top, its roots go even deeper. And so, uh, so being rooted and grounded in love, who is a person? And that directs my imagination not um not the trauma from my past so to everyone out there um uh the reason why we a lot of times i have not had endurance is because i will get triggers from memory triggers of disappointment triggers of it didn't work triggers of newscast triggers of stories triggers of fear-based realities that do not belong to us. And so you so so I would I would encourage everyone use your imagination to eradicate all of the other factors that don't matter. And though they had a the only reason why they got a loud voice now is because we practice listening to them. You know oh, what I mean? Come on. But but once we eliminate uh, the practice of uh, listening to these things, they become more faint and they become more faint and they become more faint. You, Jesus, look at her. We call her in the act of adultery. Yeah, he's writing with his finger. What are you going to do? She, it, this, it, and he's steady writing with his finger. And, 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 uh, and, and all these symptoms are yelling at him about what he should. And this is that. And your, your, if you will, Abraham, your, your womb, her womb is dead. She can't carry no child. And man, you can't even rise, if you will, to the occasion. What are you talking about? And, 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 and because he stood and used his divine imagination, nerve endings came back. Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all these different mm -hmm. other things. And so direct your imagination. Direct. Remember, the good fight of faith is a focused fight, if it's a fight at all. And it's always uh, 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 intentional when you start practicing it in the beginning, but it means nothing. This is our inheritance. This is who yeah. we are. And so let's run with it, Dr. Bill. Amen. Amen. And, and just to put, put an addendum on that, uh, it, back in Genesis 18, when this happened, think about this. Abraham refused to consider any of the elements, but here's Sarah. She laughs within herself, and she thought, and this is from the NIV, uh, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? I mean, God, you got to be kidding me. Now, it isn't that nobody looked at the natural situation. That's not true. It's just that we're talking about who we've known as the father of our faith refused to look at the circumstances. And I think, you know, uh, if you really want to say, you know, we need to not pattern ourselves after Abraham but pattern ourselves after God. Well, think about this. Abraham didn't start out, even though he was of the father, he didn't start out 
uh, as a man who was patterned after the mind of God, but it didn't take too long before Abraham began to believe beyond his wildest imagination. And the Bible says that God saw the faith in him. He was called righteous because of his faith. And, uh, you know, here again, Ephesians 1, 4, that God seen us as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence. What he called us from the beginning of time is who we still are. So praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody, for input. Oh, my goodness. Uh, each each uh, each two rounds, it was just a sermon within itself that uh, could be shared on Facebook. And uh, I want to tell you, everybody, thank you for watching this series. Uh, we're going to have this downloaded and up on YouTube within the hour. Uh, also, if you would, click like and click share. Let people know about this. This is another exciting show, and that's what we want to bring you. I don't care if five people are watching, ten people are watching, a hundred people or a thousand people. We want to bring you an exciting show that it will bless you and inspire you to believe beyond your wildest imagination. Amen. And uh, uh, also remember, we are listener supported and uh, we just appreciate everybody so much for your, your prayers, for watching and for all that you do. We love you all. Uh, panel, thank you so much. Wow. So good. Um. Yeah. All right. So anyway, thank you so much for everybody being on and we'll see you uh, in the morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, Thursday night, Apostle Brian Christian, Friday morning, uh, whoever I said it was earlier. So <laughs> we love you all and we'll see you soon. Bye bye, everyone. Bye.